Clock Shows and Podcasts. All right, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say it's good. Let's go. Clock Shows and Podcasts. All right. All right. At everyone, time again for the worst show I make. Picking shows for spring 2019. All right, picking shows for spring 2019. For those unfamiliar, I go through the mal listings for the new season of anime, and then I read them and then decide what to watch. That's it. That's the whole show. Let's begin. Okay. (laughs) Fucking click it, dude. All right. What's going on? All right. We got One Punch Man second season, the second season of One Punch Man. All right, so I'm actually, uh, I actually was... This is going to sound really hipstery. I've been a One Punch Man since before it was cool. And I actually read the One Punch Man manga before the anime even came out. Uh, So I am going to watch that. And that's all there is to that, actually. There's nothing else to do. All right, One Punch Man. Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. Ah, boy, I just don't know about Attack... The second part of the third season of Attack on Titan. I just don't know anymore whether I'm still invested in Attack on Titan. Uh, It just... I don't care about anything that's happening in it. I hear it gets good in the manga, but welcome Woohoo Broke Back, by the way. Uh, I just... I don't care. I don't think. I don't think I care. If I watch it, I watch it. I'm not going to add it. I just don't care anymore. (laughs) Isekai Quartet. All right. A mysterious switch appeared one day. Upon pressing it, they were sent to a different alternative world. These are characters from other alternative worlds gathering together. Uh, So this is ReZero, Konosuba, Overlord, and... uh, 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 Yujo Senki, uh, all in one setting. It appears to be, my guess is they're not making full episodes of this. My guess is they're going to make like, uh, like short five minute episodes, but it's basically a crossover before, between like four major isekai series. And I am absolutely watching it. Um, it's going to be either amazing or it's going to be a train wreck. Either way I'm in. Uh, Alright, what do we got here? Boongo Stray Dogs. Boongo Stray Dogs, third season, the third season of Boongo Stray Dogs. Admittedly, I know vaguely of Boongo Stray Dogs, but I've never watched Boongo Stray Dogs. So let's read the plot of this and just just see what's happening. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's worth it. See, it's made by Bones 2016. I actually thought it was older. I was thinking like 2013. Uh, for weeks, Atosh... Atushi Nakajima's orphanage has been plagued by a mystical tiger that only he he seems to be aware of. Suspected to be behind the strange incidents, the 18-year-old is abrupt. You give it a 5 out of 10? Good to know. Is abruptly kicked out of the orphanage and left hungry, homeless, and wandering through the city. Not a great start already. Uh, while starving in a riverbank, Katushi saves a rather eccentric man named Osumu Daize from drowning. Whimsical suicide enthusiast and supernatural detective Daize has been investigating the same tiger that has been terrorizing the boy. Together with Daize's partner, Dopo Kunikita, uh, they solve the mystery, but its resolution leaves Atushi in a tight spot. As various odd jobs take place, Atushi is coerced into joining their firm of supernatural investigators. Taking unusual cases, the police cannot handle alongside his numerous enigmatic co-workers. Um, this is 12 episodes, 23. This is action, comedy, mystery, sending, superpower, supernatural. I'm going to be honest. This sounds like it's in a similar vein to sort of bunny girl senpai monogatari uh mushishi that kind of thing uh holic watch the first season never watched it again (laughs) i rarely watch anything again i'm gonna be honest it's it sounds like it's something i would watch if i didn't have anything else to watch 
But we'll see what happens with the second season. Maybe the second season sounds a little spicy, and I want to know what's happening. Despite their differences in position, three men, the youngest senior executive of Port Mafia, Osamu Daisei, the lowest-ranking member, Shunosuke uh, Oda, and the intelligent agent, Angu Sakaguchi, gather at the Lupin Bar at the end of the day to relax and take delight in the company of friends. However, one night, Angu disappears, a photograph taken at the bar is all that's left the three together. Fast forward to the present, and Daisei is now a member of the armed detective agency, The Guild, an American grifted, gifted organization, has entered the fray and is intent on taking the agency's work permit. They must now divide their attention between two groups, The Guild and the Port Mafia, who oppose their very existence. You rewatch your favorites often? Yeah, alright, uh, so the second one sounds like a prequel, um, and I'm gonna be honest... It somehow sounds even less interesting. So I think we're going to go ahead and skip out on season three. Um, Fruits Basket 2009. After a family tragedy turns her life upside down, 16-year-old high schooler Toro Honda takes matters into her own hands and moves out onto a tent. Unfortunately for her, she pitches her new home on the on a private land belonging to the mysterious Soma clan, and it isn't long before the owner discovers her secret. But as Toru quickly finds when the family offers to take her in, the Somas have a secret of their own. When hugged by the opposite sex, they turn into animals of the Chinese Zodiac. Okay, so interesting thing about uh, Fruits Basket is I watched the original anime years ago, and it was okay, um, but I often cite Toru Honda as my first waifu. <laughs> Uh, so if you're asking me, am I watching the new Fruits Basket adaption that's supposed to be closer to the manga, I'm going to ask you why the fuck I would not. <laughs> yeah, this is a remake. This one's following the manga, though, unlike the original anime. So yeah, obviously I'm watching Fruits Basket. Get the fuck out of here. Kind of crazy world where we live in where I wouldn't watch that. All right. Kinemetsu no Yaiba. Uh, since ancient times, rumors have been abound of man-eating demons lurking in the woods. Uh, because of this, local town's folk never venture outside at night. Legend has it a demon slayer also roams the night, hunting down these bloodthirsty demons. For young Tanjiro, these rumors will soon become his harsh reality. <laughs> Ever since the death of his... I'm gonna be honest, though, I kind of liked uh, the mouse boy better than the cat boy, but, you know, whatever. Ever since the death of his father, Tanjiro has taken upon himself to support his family. Although their lives may be hardened by tragedy, they found happiness. But that ephemeral warmth is shattered one day when Tanjiro finds his family slaughtered and the lone survivor, his sister Nezuko, turned into a demon. To his surprise, however, Nezuko still shows sign of humanimation and thought. Thus, Tanjiro's quest to fight demons and turn his sister a human again. That's actually... That's actually kind of interesting. This is uh, Ufotable. Uh, action demons, historical shown in Supernatural. Uh, let's see, this is based on a manga. And let's take a good look at these images here. Uh, we got, oh, that's, uh, that's kind of reminiscent of the Eureka 7 art style. Um, the fuck is happening with that? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks very, very Japanese-y. Uh, all right, let's see what the manga's going to say. Uh, all right, since ancient... Who did this? Uh, I don't know who that is. Since ancient times, rumor of Band of Man and Demons lurking in the... This is the exact, this is the exact same thing. Uh, published since 2016. This is a really old school... This is like a 90s art style. That's weird that this is 2016. Who the fuck did this? Wait, hold up. Oh, there we go. Using my new mouse button. Uh, he made that, and he made something called Hinawa no Zigzag. Which is a one-shot. Made in 2015. What an old art style. Did he work on anything else? No, no, she, yeah, she didn't work on anything else. Weird, okay. Maybe, like, assisted, like, a classic 90s, or just, like, copied the olden style, because that is a 90s art style, that's weird. All right, I'm in, sounds interesting. Um, 
All right, Kenjin no Mogo, Mago. Who cares? I, I even I don't even I don't. A young man who had surely died in an accident was reborn another day world as a baby. At least he starts as a baby. After that, he was uh, picked up by the patriot hero Sage Merlin Wolford and was given the name Shin. He was raised as a grandson by Merlin and soaked up Merlin's teachings, earning him some shocking powers. However, when he became 15, his grandfather Merlin said, I forgot to teach him common sense. An abnormal boy's unconventional otherworld fantasy life starts here. All right. <laughs> Everything about this looks incredibly just boring and generic. And here's what I'm going to say right now. Is I'm going to say that I would say I'm not going to fucking watch this. I refuse. But let's be clear here. I say this every single time and I end up watching it anyway. So I'm just going to add it. Just because, let's be honest, I'm going to watch this anyway. All right. <laughs> PA works. Okay. Oh, that was Silverlink also. I forget exactly what Silverlink does. I think they're decent. Uh, they make comedies. Oh, boy. Oh, that's going to be a fucking train wreck, actually. Okay. All right. Fairy gone. Once upon a time, fairies were tools of war. Interesting idea already. The story takes place in a world where fairies possess and dwell in animals, giving them mysterious abilities. By removing the organs and possessed animals and transplanting them in the humans, fairies can be summoned as an alter ego and can be used as a weapon. Such individuals who used fairies as tools of war were called fairy soldiers. Once the war was over, they completed their roles. The soldiers lost their purpose. Some began working for the government, some joined the mafia, some even became terrorists as each chose their own way to live. Nine years have passed since the war. The protagonist, Maria, uh, is a new recruit of Dorothea, an organization which investigates and suppresses fairy-related crimes. Amidst the unstable political situation, criminals with lingering wounds from war and past conflicts emerge and engage in terrorism as acts of revenge. This is the story of fairy soldiers fighting their own justice in a chaotic post-world war. Okay, uh, so here's what I'm going to say about this right now. One, the plot sounds amazing. That said, I'm skeptical about the execution. Everything about this says to me that this show is going to have a great plot that it's going to absolutely waste by, like, probably... How is this going to waste its plot? It's going to waste this plot by getting into, like... It's going to start off strong, I'm going to say, probably, with, like, a like a first episode. It introduces us to a character, gives us a bit of a Monster Week flavor, and then it invests way too much time into a villain that is not interesting. You said Danganronpa 1 didn't let you load more than one bullet? Danganronpa 1 lets you load more than one bullet. I said that? If I said that, I was wrong. Uh, we played Gentle, so we didn't have to load more than one bow. Oh, yeah, on Gentle. Yeah, it usually it gives us, like, a max of three bullets, I think, on Gentle. That's That might have one I meant. Uh, oh, yeah, obviously we're watching this. Um, okay, let's see. Also, welcome to Picking Shows. The worst show I make, but luckily we only do it four times. Yeah, one bullet till like chapter five. Yeah, there we go. Uh, boy, I wish we were looking at my hentai list. No, we're going through the spring 2019 listing and deciding what to watch. That's, that's the whole show. It's the whole show. It's, <laughs> I'm actually surprised every time people show up to this. <laughs> okay, um, you read this manga. What'd you think of this manga? While well, I read out the plot synopsis, uh, Boku Totachi. Oh, and then you hear me poorly say Japanese. Boku Tachi wa Benkyo ga deki nai. Uh, his late father always said that a useless man should strive to be useful. So to that end, third year high school student Narayuki Yuga 
dedicated himself to becoming a high-achieving student in his school. Despite his history of poor grades, in order to give his destitute family a better life, his ultimate goal is to attain the special VIP nomination, a prestigious scholarship covering all future university tuition fees. Although Naruyuki could feasibly be a shoo-in for the nomination, he is constantly overshadowed by classmates. Uh, by classmates Rizu Ogata and Fumino Furuhashi in mathematics and literature, respectively. To his delight, Naruyuki receives the nomination, but there's a catch. He has to tutor his two star classmates, who are each hopelessly mediocre at each subject's expertise. To make matters worse, the subjects they're horrible at are the same subjects they want to pursue for the future, and to submit university the applications draw nearer. Naruyuki must find an effective tutor method before the girls, uh, before it's too late. Similar to Nisekoi, can't think of the last anime you watched. Your manga sensei you watched it with a few friends, so you made a pair. That show, I hate that show. I hate that show in principle because that show proves to me that the author is capable of making good scenes and good characters. But he can't pull his head out of his fucking sister fetish enough to actually focus on a decent concept. And the sisters are consistently the worst character. Consistently. <laughs> um, okay, this is, first off, I actually really like Nisekoi. Uh, I also like dumb fucking comedies. Like, romance comedy is my genre. So, but here's the weird part about that. Uh, is that I'm going to go to winter real quick because there is an anime, I swear, that aired in winter literally last season with this exact same plot. That actually is not true. Uh, that actually comes from a parody website. Um, uh, that, that made a joke about that. I did hear that, and I looked into it, and I found out it was a satirical article. Although, <laughs> it sounds true enough. Like, I would have believed it, which is why I looked into it. Um. <laughs> yes, I wish it was true. I'm with you on that. Yeah, that is the exact same plot as an anime that laired last season. Like, it is identical, uh, and I can't find it. Um, is it this one? Yeah, uh, it's pretty similar to this one. Uh, alright, uh, sure, fuck it. I don't care. What? <laughs> I don't care at this point. I don't care. Alright, um, what is this? Nande Koko Ni Sensei Ga. Uh, why the hell are you here, teacher? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a title. Ugh. 17-year-old Ichiro Sato is an average teenager who happens to find himself in a perverted situation with his teacher, Kanako uh, Kojima. Follow his erotic love comedy about their mishaps throughout their daily lives and how Ichiro and Kana choose to handle themselves. So this is just like a, like an etchy comedy. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, we're going to pass on that one. Um... Carolyn Tuesday. Fifty years have passed since mankind began migrating to the new frontier, Mars. It's an age where most culture is produced by AI and people are content to be passive consumers. Sounds like paradise. There's a girl scraping, uh, scrapping a living in the metropolis of Alba City. She's working part-time when trying to become a musician. She's always felt like something is missing. Her name is Carol. There's a girl born to a wealthy family in a provincial town of Herschel City. She dreams of becoming a musician, but nobody around her understands. She feels like the loneliest person in the world. Her name is Tuesday. You're going to add it on stream? <laughs> Woohoo, broke back. We all know if I was going to add it, it would have been on stream with zero shame. Uh, a chance meeting between them brings them together. They want to sing. They want to make music together. They feel like they might have a chance. The two of them uh, may only create a tiny wave, but that wave will eventually grow into something larger. This sounds like a, like a sort of, oh, this is a romance. Interesting. Uh, I wouldn't have actually guessed. This sounds kind of like a like an Iyashi K series. Um, I'm actually going to pass. Uh Mostly just, like, I don't think it's going to be bad or anything. I mean, it might be, but I don't think it it's going to be, like, atrocious. I just don't think it's going to be my thing. 
Uh, Suiyaki Kitsune no Senko-san. The everyday life of Nanako, a salaried man working for an exploitive company, is suddenly intruded by a fox girl Senko, 800-year-old little girl, whether it be cooking, cleaning, or special service, question mark. She'll heal his exhaustion with tender care. Um, uh, a... You're weird. Who buys anime on DVD or Blu-ray if I'm... <laughs> I actually try to buy all of my favorites on Blu-ray um, or DVD if there's no available Blu-ray. The problem is sometimes they just don't make Blu-rays that don't come in like 30 volume can collections, and I refuse to. I, re I refuse to buy 30 volumes each with like one disc per episode. It's just not happening. Uh, this is it. This is the whole plot. It's, it's, he has a fox girl. Uh, fuck it. Yeah, I'll watch that. Why not? I ain't got nothing else going on in my life. <laughs> Could be cute. Alright, what's going on with this? This is, a lot of romances this year. F which is great, because fucking 2018 sucked. Uh, Shumetsu Toshi. One day a city disappears... Takuya, a professional by contract courier, and Lone Wolf meets Yuki, the only survivor from the city's extinction. Extinction? The two rely on a message from Yuki's father, who is uh, who was heard to be missing, and head towards the disappeared city lost. I feel like I'm reading this long wrong, and I should start over. One day, a city suddenly disappears. There we go. Uh, Takuya, professional, by the contract courier, and lone wolf, meets Yuki, the only survivor from the city's extinction. The two rely, relay a on a message from Yuki's father, who uh, was heard to be missing, and head toward the disappeared city lost. This is worded weirdly. However, unexpected obstacles strike before the pair, with a reality especially shocking for Yuki. Before them are the feelings of those left behind a mysterious group manipulating the shadows and unraveling the hidden conspiracy. Takuya... <sighs> Takuya and Yuki were both initially strangers, would deepen their bond during the journey and around unravel the mystery of the lost city. Okay, this sounds... like it has an interesting concept, and I guarantee you it's gonna fall flat. There's no way. Am I just a, am I just like like a skeptical? I'm I'm just I'm too skeptical. I think is what it is. I just assume everything is going to be trash. I just hear a plot and I'm like, "Oh man, that sounds good. I bet it's going to suck." Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how you know you watch too much anime. All right, yeah. No, I'm down. I'm down. I'll watch it. It's going to suck though. It reminds me of that revenge rom-com. Uh, Masumune's Revenge? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, okay, I actually always thought Masumune's Revenge was gonna suck. And it turned out to be alright. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> I, I will always remember that, though, because of the mom. Which is an amazing character. Because she's basically like a 40-year-old loli. And the reason she looks like that is, and it's amazing... She has a disease called lolicunitis. <laughs> and I love it. I love that as an excuse. Because we know what he's doing. And the author's just like, ah, fuck it. You know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I appreciate the honesty. Senryu Shoujo. Uh, Yukishiro Nanako is a cute, cheerful high school girl with one particular peculiar trait. Instead of verbal communication, she writes Senryu, a type of haiku poems to relay her thoughts. That sounds like that's going to get annoying it, immediately. Together with ex-delinquent Bushujima Iriji, their budding freshman in high school of the school's literature club, even though Nanako doesn't talk, the power of Senryu, the adorable pair has no problem enjoying their fun school life through the tune of five, seven, five syllables. This is probably not going to be able to last for an entire episode. And if it does, it's going to make you want to shoot yourself. Um, I would probably say five minute episodes, maybe ten. It's done by Connect, which is not a studio I'm familiar with. Um, they, oh, oh, they're actually 
they're actually legit. That might be a real thing. Well, anyway, I guarantee you it's going to be fucking unbearable. All right. Hitrobochi, no. I'm not going to pronounce those two O's. Oh, I think those are meant to be boobs. Maybe not. I don't know. Hitrobochi, no. Circle, circle. Saikatsu. Uh, Hitori Bochi suffers from extreme social anxiety. She's not good at talking to people, takes pretty extreme actions, is surprisingly adept at avoiding people. Her legs cramp when she overexerts herself, gets full of herself when alone, will vomit when exposed to extreme tension, and often comes up with plans. Now she's entering middle school, and her only friend, Yuari Kai, is attending a different school. This leaves Bochi alone, surrounded by new classmates with whom she might make friends before Kai will ever talk to her again. How much money do I think I've blown on anime? <sighs> All right, it, uh, uh, now if we're being honest here, if we're being totes honest here, I started watching anime in the golden age of anime piracy. <laughs> uh, infer with that what you will. Um, the answer is probably... Somewhere in the 500s, maybe. Probably somewhere in the 500s. This one I can see actually going places. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've said that this entire stream is, yeah, no, this one, this one's going to make it. The rest are going to be terrible, but this is it. Uh, uh, Midara, no, uh, first off, she's fucking adorable. Um, Midara no uh, Ochan wa Benkyo Gai Dekin. I don't speak Japanese. Fuck you. When O was in kindergarten, she smiled ear to ear as she told her classmates how her father, a best selling erotic author, chose her name. Uh, as uh, that probably meant his name. A as in Apple and O as in or. Oh no, her name. A as in Apple and O as in Orange. <laughs> What a doting, what a, what a loving father with that. That day still haunts her ten years later as she studies with a single goal in mind to get into an elite university and achieve independence from her father once and for all. She has no youth to misspend and no time to think about boys until her classmate, King Normi Kajima, approaches her with a shocking confession of love. She tries to lose Kijima, but uh, he can't take a hint, and as her mind runs wild with dirty thoughts, she realizes her father has totally influenced her. That sounds utterly charming, and I'm in, and I'm so glad that there are romances in fucking 2019 because there were not any in fucking 2018 they were all garbage i mean i'm not gonna say they're not all garbage this year i haven't watched any of them but i can hope kono no oto tomorrow this is a fucking cute boys do cute things if i've ever seen it isn't it oh it's a shonen all right, I'm 90% sure they don't make cute boys do cute things for shonen. So now I'm just confused. Since the graduation of the senior members of the club, uh, Takezo ends up being the so unless we're counting JoJo, <laughs> ends up being the sole member of Koto, a traditional Japanese string instrument club. Now that the new school year has begun, Takezo will have to seek out his new members into the club, or the club will become terminated. Out of nowhere, a new member barges into the near abandoned club room, demanding to join the club. How will Takezo be able to keep his studies alive and deal with this rascal and new member? Yeah, no, I don't. And they've already announced the second season, so they're committed. Yeah, no, I don't care. I don't care about string instruments. Apparently, I already planned to watch this, which is fascinating to me. So let's see what I already agreed to, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna on-add it, aren't I? Uh, okay, Kono yo no hate de koi wo utao shoujo yuno. Uh, Takuyu Arima is a young student whose father, a historian who conducted various researches, disappeared recently. During a summer vacation, Takuya receives a peculiar passage from his missing father, along with a letter containing information about the existence of various parallel worlds. At first, Takuya doesn't uh, take it seriously, but soon he realizes that he possesses a device that allows him to travel to alternate dimensions. Is father alive after all? If so, where is he? Oh, okay. I know why I added this. Um, I added this because... 
There was an anime that came out fucking forever ago. That, I don't think that was it. <laughs> or something. Whatever. I, I, uh, I stumbled upon this. Uh, and people said that it was really good. Like, the the visual novel it's based off of was really good. And I heard that this anime was coming out, so I wanted to watch it. So I, I added that mostly out of recommendation. Um, all right. What do we got here? Uh, Sara Zanmai. The stage is Asukosa. One day, the three year, uh, second year middle school students... <sighs> I hate when a fucking anime description starts with a million people's names. Uh... Kazuki, Yasuka, Toi, Kuji, and Enta Jinai meet a Kappa-like creature named Kepi, who is the self-proclaimed heir to the throne of the Kappa Kingdom. Uh, Kepi forcibly takes the students Shiro Kodama, a mythical organ Kappa steal through a person's anus, and they are transformed in Kappa. Kepi informs them if you want to return to your former selves, you need to connect in that way. You must bring me... The Sorio Kodama of Zombies. Will the three boys be able to connect and take the Sorio Kodama of Zombies? At the same time, two policemen, Ryo Niyoboshi and Mabu Akutsu, try to do something to police box where they are stationed. The literal fuck is this about? The, the fuck? No. Okay, first off, I'm not watching it, but second off, what? Alright, what's going on with this? Uh, Genjo, no Magmel. Uh, one day in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, a miracle occurred. A new continent appeared out of nowhere. That is a miracle. The new continent was home for a new mysterious plants, creatures, and minerals. Humanity is excited as the age of exploration has returned. This is a manga adaption. Uh, this is an interesting art style. Uh, di oh, it's Korean. It's an adaption of a Korean series. All right. And that explains the art style, I guess. Uh... Yeah, the... <laughs> yeah, it came out already, I believe. The, the, the finale. Um... Let's see, sequel, animation, proof of justice, probably proof of justice, right? Nope. Magical Valentine's Day. Uh, animation, probably animation specials. Uh, and it has a 7.02, which is a thing it has, I guess. Uh, oh, shoot. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's bigger than my collection. Most of what I own is manga, though. And as for how much I've spent on manga, I don't know. <laughs> A lot. Uh, all right. That's enough for Persona 5. Uh, you know what? I think I'm in. I want to see where this is going. Diamond No Ace Act 2. Let's be honest. I'm not going to add this, but we might as well read it. Picking up after the next year at the end of the fall tournament, Saito High School baseball team battled it out with new and old faces to begin their tournament at Kyoshin. All right. You missed it and you can't see it anywhere? Oh, that's... that's You can probably find it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so baseball. America's pastime. I'm, I don't care. I don't tend to watch sports series. Uh, what is happening over here? Mayonaka no Occult Koimuin. 
Miyoko Arata is the newly assigned to Shinjuku Ward Office Nighttime Regional Relations Department. Each of Tokyo's 23 wards has one such department established to mitigate paranormal and occult-related activity, already a special skill and understanding of non-human speech, and the story begins with him and Cantor's a yokai, Shinjuku Goyen Park, who refers to him as the legendary high end exorcist Abe no Shinme. Uh, same, eh? Whatever. Wow. Uh, that, of course, of course... He's the reincarnation of Abe no Seime. Why wouldn't he be? Why would he not be? All right. Yeah. No, you f f fuck right off with that. All right. Nobunaga Sensei. No Osanazuma. One day a girl falls in love with me will suddenly appear before me. Middle school teacher Nobunaga has always been dreaming of such a gal game like situation. However, the one who appeared before him was Kinsho, a 14 year old girl who proclaims herself to be his wife, appearing as. Uh, to have arrived from the Sengoku era, she makes stakes Nobunaga as Nobunaga Ogata and urges him to conceive a child with her. Thus begins the age difference love comedy between Gao Gaming loving teacher and Sengoku era expert princess. That is an interesting concept. However, I'm not into romances between teachers and students, especially if one of them is 14. It just it's this level of weirdness that I'm like, uh, you know what, not fully comfortable with. Gonna back out now. Uh, Joshi Kausei. <laughs> you don't get... <laughs> what am I being linked to? Is this the manga collection? Yeah, mine is uh, bigger. Um, alright. Who needs dialogue when you're this cute? The beautiful but unlucky Momoko, the cool collected Shibumi, and the refreshingly innocent Mayumi star in a silent manga. No, this is not a manga. No speeches, no dialogue, just pictures, sound effects, and three high school girls living their daily lives. Well, okay, so here's the problem. Uh, I tend to have an anime up on one man uh, monitor and like a video game or something up on the other monitor. And I am not likely to watch anything um i'm not likely to watch anything <laughs> that i have to look at uh so yeah we're gonna go ahead and not do that uh strike witches i vaguely know what strike witches is uh yoshika mayafuji joins the 501st joint fighter wing a defense unit specializing in taking down alien beings known as i'm sorry Okay, okay, good. All right, good. Keep them coming. Keep it, because as of now, I am unimpressed. <laughs> a defense unit specializing in taking down alien beings known as Nuroi. However, in the days of no invasion, she and members of the unit are taking uh, down day-to-day -day tasks like cooking and laundry. This is... Have I seen Strike Witch? What the fuck? I clicked... Okay, look. And... <laughs> I fucking click this, all right, and I see, the first thing I see is, like, a bunch of women in, like, military uniforms, and I'm like, oh, is this a military, like, kind of show? That could be interesting, and then I click it, and then the next thing I see is some dog girl in a school swimsuit with a fucking, <laughs> fucking sailor uniform just tossed half ass away. God damn it, anime. Stop ruining my military drama desires. Right. Castle in the Sky, Fate Zero. Uh, I see, I see Scott Pilgrim in there. You can't sneak in Scott Pilgrim. Also, I also own Scott Pilgrim, but you can't sneak in Scott Pilgrim. Uh, all right. What, what the hell is this? Aria San Ora to I. Tsu ga one yu day. I do not speak <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> uh, Miss Washer, her and I in a female bath. Is this really a massage? Sort of started to work part time at a Sento, which is his hometown, as a backwasher. Ends up washing Oi, who is his classmate, but trying to cover her identity. As he massages her with days of hate from her harassment continues, he realized Oi was in love with him, uh, has in love with Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. I, I want to be clear. I'm not I'm not trying to be like a dick or anything. I need to re-listen to this because this sounds like nonsense. As a backwasher, 
uh, which is in his hometown as a backwatcher, ends up watching Oi, who is his classmate, but trying to cover her identity. As he massages her with days of hate from her, harassment continues. He realized that Oi has in love with him one-sided when he touched her hot skin. She also realized that the one who washes her is Soda, love comedy between a clumsy guy and a girl behind the red curtain. Okay. So... Remember when I said if I was going to add it, I would have done it shamelessly? Click. <laughs> All right. What's up with this? I have no, I don't know what Million Author is, but I'm sure it sucked. Second season of Million Author. Arthur. I can't pronounce things. What is this? The soy Sacred Scored Excalibur. I can't speak right now. Sacred Scored... The Sacred... You know what? Fuck it. The Sacred Scored Excalibur. A sword that was created to judge a person's ability to be the King of England. Those whom the sword accepts uh, will be called Arthur and will obtain great power. However, there is not a single Arthur but many. Due to this massive creation of legendary humans, the world and its history began to be distorted. Now with the aim of restoring the history of the world to its original cor course, Six Arthur, a master of a sword, a fighter, a sniper, a puncher, an alchemist, and a shooter set out for England. Their mission to feed all those who have managed to obtain power from the Sacred Sword of Excalibur and are using that power to destroy the world, which is a random million people. <laughs> That's the stupidest plot I've ever heard. It was Brother Brooks. I uh, lost at sea. Didn't he do... Um, I only read Scott Pilgrim, but I think he... I think he also did Snot Girl. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Am I wrong? I'm about to find out if I'm wrong. Uh... Brian Lee O'Malley? Yeah. Yeah, Snot Girl looks interesting. I might read that at some point. Uh, okay. This is gonna sound weird, especially because I passed it up last year, apparently. But, uh, I think I'm in. Uh... We'll see about second season. Roby Hachi. Always know we're in for a ride when we see Neo Tokyo, by the way. Shout out to Neo Crystal Tokyo. Uh, Neo Tokyo, the year GC, uh, Galax Galaxy Century, 0051. It's called Galaxy Century. But we're only 51 years into it. We just now decided we're, we're, we're getting rid of AD. The numbers have gotten confusing. Now we're in Galaxy Century. All right. Four digits. That's too many to remember. It's 0051. Okay. Um, not relevant, but okay. Uh, which marks half a century since first contact was made. Uh, oh, that's... the First contact, I guess, was the decision to split it. Uh, humans have obtained super light speed navigation technology and formed a commonwealth of planets with aliens. A streak of bad luck is continuing for self-proclaimed freelance uh, reportage writer Robbie Yarg, who is around 30 years old. You know what? I appreciate that he's not, like, 12 for once. He fails at work, so his contact is cut. His girlfriend leaves him. He nearly dies in a traffic accident. Debt collectors come after him. I This man's life sucks. Uh, one day, a bag snatcher steals Robbie's bag, and a young man helps him. Hitachi Kida, an 18-year-old part-time worker, catches the criminal and returns Robbie's bag. Robbie offers him his gratitude and a meal in return. Is this gay? This sounds gay. <laughs> Uh, the pair discover their complete opposites and soon part ways. However, Hitachi turns up in Robbie's life as a debt collector. Hachi uh, explains that his part-time job working for Lone Shark Yan. A cat and ma a mouse chase begins. Yan's finance president, Yan, takes his subordinates, Aro and Gara. These are... What are these names? 
<laughs> Along for a ride, Robbie managed to elude Hachi and escape with Spades while shaking off Jan's group. Robbie thinks of escaping to Ixander, a distant legendary planet in the Milky Way that is said to bring happiness to those who go there. Though Robbie thought he had escaped to space alone, he discovers Hitachi inside a spaceship. The two decide to travel across the galaxy together in search of Ixander. I'm going to be honest. I think I'm in. <laughs> I think I'm in. I want to see where this is going. Uh, this is not Boku no Pico 2. Um, Boku no Pico uh, uh, 2 was called Boku no Pico to Chico, I believe, by the way. Uh, so they already made it. Um, yeah, all right, I'm in. Uh, mix Mise story. The story takes place in the same Misei Gakuen high school as Touch, only set 26 years later. Like Touch, Mix resolves around brothers and baseball as a main theme. I don't, I don't care about baseball. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. All right, what do we got here? Uh, Hachigatsu no Cinderella 9. In the game, the player takes the role of an unnamed former little senior. What is with baseball? Little Senior League Baseball Ace who lost his or her baseball career after suffering an unspecified injury. The character moves to his or her grandmother's hometown and enrolls in the local high school. Resolved never to enter the world baseball again, when the character meets Tsubasa Ahara, he or she is persuaded to be the manager of the school's baseball uh, team and to take the team to the high school nationals at Kyoshin. Okay. I am... I'm unsure. Is spring baseball season, and that's is that's what's going on? Is that why there's a lot of baseball? Uh, Bakumatsu Crisis. Okay, you know how to tell you're in for a good anime when there is literally no listing for what <laughs> for what studio was animating it. Uh, yeah, I would actually almost argue that baseball is more of the Japanese national sport than the American one at this point. Fucking what the shit is this? I don't even know what the announcement came from. What announced this? TV anime Bakumatsu gets a sequel? So this is a sequel to something called Bakumatsu. Okay, hang on. I they I guess this is just not properly linked. Okay. Who did Bakumatsu then? Oh, Studio Dean. This looks like a this looks like a cute boys thing. Is this a cute boys thing? Uh well, baseball is considered to be the uh uh the the Americans national pastime. Um even though we absolutely play more football. We absolutely play more football. Um, the Bakumatsu was an era in which souls of young men burned for anxiety for their country's future. Tagusi say a soldier of... Oh, uh, we, we, we read this. <laughs> yes. A soldier of fortune from Chusho sneaks aboard a government ship with his comrade Katsura Kagero in search of a mysterious time beast with the power to manipulate time that he fears the government wishes to keep for himself. Rather than allow such power to fall into the wrong hands, Takus Takasugi plans to destroy the artifact, but having obtained it, the artifact is quickly stolen. Forcing the player we to follow a mysterious thief to the seat of government in Kyoto. However, when they arrive in the capital, they discover that the government has been overthrown and the deity Susano now reigns in this place. I'm sorry? That escalated very quickly. Uh, the streets of the city the people are in such different that Takusugi and Katsura remember. The times have uh, changed, but their mission hasn't. Uh, Takusugi and Katsura resolve to reset time and save their nation from the nefarious forces trying to hijack it. That is an interesting plot. I don't know why I turned it down. Probably because it sounds like it's not going to be very good. And also because it has an average score of 5.88, which implies that it wasn't. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Woo broke back.
Uh, the Bakumatsu is an area of this is the same. This is the same. This is the exact same. This is just the sequel. Uh, alright. Namu Amida Batsu, Rendai Utena. Uh, you can't write Utena without me immediately thinking of Revolutionary Girl. The pain that everyone cannot escape when living. The living, old, sick, and death. The way to save it through Buddhist enlightenment. Uh, at the end of a war, a prince who obtained the Buddhist enlightenment became the Shaka Nayori and saved the world. Long time passed. Long time has passed. Okay, you know what? I thought it was me, but then I saw it says long time has passed since that. Currently the latter age of de uh, decadence. Mara, the worry that once tried to destroy Shaka's enlightenment, has made a contract with the devil in order to seek revenge against Shaka. He begins to control people with worries. Meanwhile, team centering around Shaka called the 13 Buddhas and the two benevolent deities who protect the Dharma, the Taishu Shaku Ten and Bon Ten have stood up against Mara to protect people from worries. A battle between Mara and the Buddhist gods that involves people now begins. It is going to see a limited uh, screening at the cinema count. Um... I mean, as watching an anime, yes. This sounds like this is based off of a story I should probably know, but don't. Um, I'm not very... As Asashi Productions. What have they made? Oh, they're not... That was done by Madaka Box? Oh, yeah, and Gainax. Yeah, I was like, wait, didn't Gainax do that? Uh, Asashi... Oh, they make, they make Precure. Okay, yeah, they know what they're doing then. Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to skip it, probably. But, you know, good knowing it exists. Last time I you watched and release was I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Okay, well, you know we're going to have to look that shit up. I want to eat... Is this it? Okay. Uh, let's see when this came out. 2018. Oh, I probably read the description of this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. We're getting we're getting into the dregs now. Yadogami Chan Kansatsu Nikki. Uh, Keito Jin is a second year high school student. Moved to Aichi from Tokyo. He meets Monika uh, Yadogami, who is has very heavy Nagoya dialect, and he learns about Nagoya through joining the photography club. Okay, that's actually interesting. Um, because and it's by Creators and Pack. So this is going to be relatively short. This reminds me of My Sister is an Osaka Mama, uh, which was intro which had a s relatively similar plot, but it was about Osaka. Uh, so you know what? Sure, let's learn about Nagoya. That's what this is basically going to be, by the way. This is going to be about learning about Nagoya, I guarantee you. There's nothing else to it. It's just, hey, you want to learn about Nagoya? And I'll be like, yeah, why not? Fuck it. Let's learn about Nagoya. So there you go. Oh, you know, I mean, if it's the American release, that counts, obviously. Um, Cho Kato Girl 1, is that 6th? 1 6th Amazing Stranger, which is 1 6th an amazing, strange title. Uh, Boido Haruto, a hardcore attacker with no interest in 3D women, once appreciated figures from afar, accepting that if you can get into them, there's no turning back. However, when Nona, a character he loved from an anime called Girls Planetary Investigation, had a figure of her released, he ended up purchasing it, and then that night, the figure of Nona somehow came to life, and a couple-like lifestyle between man and toy began. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, i never seen that plot before. Ugh.
Okay, so I've seen that plot before, is what I'm saying. Cinderella Girls, Gekijo Climax Season. This is the fourth season of Cinderella Girls, Gekijo, which I imagine is a short, chi yep, short, chibi comedy version of, like, parody of Cinderella Girls. So, yep. This looks old as shit. What's this nonsense? Uh, Jimoto Ga Japan. There's a new tough guy student in Tokyo. His name is Tokyo. Here's the thing. I'm not even confident I'm saying that wrong. His name is Tokyo, and he's raring to go to see how scrappy the locals are. But when he comes face to face with a Japan-obsessed redhead kid that won't leave him alone until he tells him exactly what prefecture he's from. His life takes a turn for crazy. This kid isn't just Japan-obsessed. He developed a martial art based on all the different prefectures in the country. Excusez-moi? <laughs> all right. Uh, well, luckily for me, I'm not Japan-obsessed, so I'm gonna nope the fuck out of that nonsense. Um, Aikatsu Friends, Kageyaki no Jewel, which is a sequel to Aikatsu Friends, which is an anime I didn't watch, apparently. Aine Yuki, who is a regular student at Star Harmony Academy, Normal Division, Mayo Minato from the Idol Division, invites her to join Akatsu to fulfill Aine's girl to make friends. She also befriends Maiko Chuno and Ama Hinata, who are also idols. Aine and Mio form a pair to become best friends, to become the Bright Diamond Friends. Kara and Kimoshiro. These are just names. Alright, so this is just like a fucking idol thing, then. <laughs> Can you be a weeb? If you are already Japanese? Or are you just, like, like a nationalist at that point? Uh, card Fight Vanguard Zoku, Koko Sei Han. I actually hear the van, uh, the Card Fight Vanguard animes are pretty good. I have heard that. Um, I won't be watching this, but I have heard that they are pretty good. Beyblade Burst Gachi. The new season of Beyblade. It's like spinning taps, but you make them fight. <laughs> this year's March into of Shoku, Shoga Kukan Koro Koro Comics Magazine announced on Friday that a new Blade series called... I love that even the description of this anime is unenthused. That a new Blade Blade series titled Beyblade Burst GT Gachi will debut on April 5th. The series will stream weekly on Koro Koro YouTube channel, the official Beyblade portal website, and the Takakori Tomi channel. The magazine shared a visual of the new protagonist with short blonde hair. Yep. <laughs> yeah, basically... <laughs> Uh, um, all right, Kirito Prechan second season is the second season of Kirito Prechan. Uh, this is another anime I didn't watch for some reason. First year middle school girls, Mirai Moniyama and Imo Moigi are two aspiring idols because it's an idol show, and I don't tend to watch those, who decide to use the pre on system, a system used famous by people and companies to broadcast content. Like many girls starting their own channels and uploading content, the pair decide to become their own producers, starting their own channel and attempting to become pre on idols. Okay, so basically this is about, this is about Japanese YouTube, uh, girls, uh, trying to make it on Japanese YouTube, which I forget the name of Japanese YouTube, so fuck it, it's about two YouTubers. <laughs> uh, dual Masters. Masters, Masters. Uh, perfect blue, man. I wasn't into it, but the ending blew my fucking mind. And then I'm like, yo... Duel Masters. This is a sequel to something called Duel Masters. Which is a show that exists. Duel Masters. Duel Masters. Duel Masters. This is, if I have to go back one more fucking year, we're just quitting. Duel Masters. And we're done. <laughs> 
I don't care anymore. Fuck it. If you want to know what Duel Masters is, you fucking look it up. <laughs> uh, B Rapper Street, a multimedia project collaboration between Shokugan, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Sony Music Entertainment, Sony Music Communications, and features the theme of rap and hip-hop. The story follows Yohei, a boy who raps to the beat of his farts. The anime will air right, uh, within Oda Suta, Good Morning Star Children's television program, and the manga counterpart will be published in March. Duel Masters is basically what Wizards of the Coast uses to test concepts for magic. Oh. Good to know. All right. Shonen Ashiba Go 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 Machan 4, which is probably, I'm going to take a guess here, uh, the fourth season of Shono Ashiba, Go Go Gomachan. Crazy that that's what this is. This looks like a kid's show. Follows the daily life of first grade Ashiba Ashina and his spotted seal pet Gomachan. It isn't a kid's show. This is a Senning series. Interesting. This is a Senning series rated G for all ages. That is the most paradoxical statement I have ever fucking heard. My guess is it's m made for the whole family? Is that what I'm supposed to take away from it? That's gotta be what I have to take away from it. Yeah, alright. I'll let it go. <laughs> That's... That's really it, that, or it's mistagged, which I guess is also possible. This this looks like kids anime. This looks like we've gotten down to the kids section. Uh, this is Kadama no Gojiro. I don't know what it is, but I probably won't watch it. This is an adaption of a manga about a man made of yarn. All right, well, that's we we did it. We did it. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm I'm in. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, seven seeds. In the immediate future, a giant meteorite has collided with Earth. All living organisms, including mankind, have been wiped off the face of the planet. The government, who had, had foreseen this outcome, took measures to counter the worst-case scenario. In particular, was a project called Seven Seeds, in which five sets of seven young men and women were carefully selected and placed into teams. Spring, summer, A, summer, B, autumn, and winter. Each participant, when put under cryogenic sleep, in hopes of preserving the continued existence of mankind. When those men and women awoke, they found themselves suddenly thrust into a cruel world while bereft and grieved over forever losing their loved ones they saw it find a way to survive <laughs> you're uh reading senes it's tame compared to uh berserk aka baby's first setting um i don't think berserk was my first setting <laughs> i think it was like my 80th <laughs> um you know what this sounds interesting i'll probably watch it but i am gonna put this out here uh we have Five sets of seven young men and women. So that's five times seven. Uh, which I could probably do the math for, but I I won't. I'm just going to use a calculator. Uh, yeah, that's 35. That is 35 people. No. That's 70. Uh, that is 70, not as a setting? Interesting. Uh, that, so that's 70 people. Oh, I guess hence seven seeds. Um, so, <laughs> because of inbreeding and the requirement to have some, like, divergence in the gene pool, it is worth noting that the minimum number of, uh, people you need to keep a species going is 512 uh so they only have 70 people which means at some point in time people are gonna be fucking their cousins until they come out with eight heads is all i'm saying all i'm saying is humanity's only hope doesn't seem to have enough people involved in it uh let's find out what nana is 
Uh, let's see. This is an anime. It's a shoujo. Yeah, I always thought it was a shoujo. So it is as far from ascending as possible. <laughs> um. All right. Ultraman. Ultraman. Shinjiro Hayata, son of Shin Hayata, who was the first Ultraman, has a new special power. One day, Shinjiro was attacked by non-known enemies. Ultraman saved the day and unmasked himself to show Shinjiro that, his f that he was his father. Uh, wearing an Ultraman suit provided by Mr. Aide, formerly a member of the SSSSP Science Special Search Party, Shinjiro throws down the gauntlet and helps his father, then the real battle commences. People always think the, of extreme gore porn. There's got to be a more wholesome setting. If we're questioning everything, Chobits, is Chobits even seven? Um, setting, okay. <laughs> there's a there's a huge misunderstanding about things like setting, shoujo, jose, and shonen. Um, what they actually refer to is demographics. And so setting anime and sending manga is actually specifically targeted to men in roughly their mid to late 20s, so, like, ages 25 to 30. Whereas shoujo is targeted to, like, young boys roughly 9 to 12, sometimes a little older, you know, the demographics don't match up perfectly, but, you know, there's some crossover between these. Um, whereas, similarly, shoujo is, um, like, 9 to 12-year-old girls, and jose is, like, 25 to 30-year-old women, like that. Um... So, yeah, there's plenty of, like, wholesome setting series uh, that's just, like, calm, chill shit. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chobits is setting. Let's see. Let's, let's look through uh, chill-ass setting shit that I know exists. Like, calm... Oh, oh, Non Non Biori, I believe, is sending. And that's in the Yashi K series. Oh, yeah, Demichon. Demichon is sending. Uh, yeah, Non Non Biori, Hinamatsuri. <laughs> you can go for Shuffle. Uh, Denai Gunai. Yeah, it, it's just more about the demographic. But yeah, people, I, I could agree that people often think of like Senin as like, like ultra violent, but it's, it's not all like that. Uh, Miru Tights, a raining morning in April. Cherry blossoms struck by rain and floats in a puddle. High school students enter the school gate carrying various colors of umbrella. Good morning, Ren. You, uh, grinted, uh, greeted Ren wearing wet tights in front of the shoe cupboard. When Ren faced her, Glumly, Homie, who was drenched, joined them as if she's jumping. The girls discuss the new semester. The girls live their irreplaceable school life as the seasons change. This sounds super, super fetishy. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, super fetishy. Let's sit. What is up with her fucking face and these fucking pictures? They're like bizarrely off center so that they look at you like head on. Uh, hope the animation in the actual show is not that bad. Um, who made this? Yokohama Animation Lab, which also made nothing I've ever heard of. Perfect. Um, you know what this reminds me of is will you show me your panties and make a disgusted face or whatever that was. Um, I'm wondering what happens if I just type in panties, if I will actually get I, the first thing I get is my little sister's panties, which is not what I wanted. Uh, what if I type in panties and disgusted? I don't get anything. This is going to be fucking impossible to find. Uh... Oh, no, it wasn't. I found it immediately. Never mind. Uh, yeah, this reminds me of Ian Sara Nagara, whatever. I want you to make a disgusted face and show me your underwear. Um, which was bizarrely intriguing as a piece of media. Because as it went on, I began to wonder about what situations this that has landed these characters into these positions. So you know what? Just for the pure curiosity, I think I am going to watch Miru Tights 
but also this this is another series that reminds me of another anime I watched called uh what is it what is it Makuro no Danshi Pillow Boys what a weird fucking show this was oh shit the best thing I could say about Pillow Boys is it it fascinates me what the main character must be like in these shows and how these characters keep ending up in this situation. This is just a guy. This guy, his name is fucking Mary. All right. I think he's named after like sheep because he's trying to help you go to sleep. This fucking guy just lives in your goddamn house canonically in the series. All right. Uh, he just lives in your fucking house and you just come home and he's just been on your bed all day. And he's like, what's going on? You tired? You want me to chat with you here? Let me chat with you. And then you fall asleep and he's like, night. I'm going to keep staying on your bed. So he's just like this boy that lives in your house and talks to you as you sleep. It's so weird. How is that setting? Uh, it's intended for men, apparently. Probably the magazine it runs in, right? Is my assumption. What's it running? I don't know what it runs in. Don't know what it runs in, but yeah, apparently it's just it's a uh, uh, intended for older men. No harm in that. You can enjoy some crossover. Uh, I watch shoujo series all the time. I had a fruit basket. All right, what's going on here? OVAs, Fate, Clyde, Liner, Prismia, Ilya. Okay, so I tried. I think I watched the first three seasons of uh, Prisma Ilya. And the problem with Prisma Ilya is it's boring. Kaon was targeted to guys, but the island skewed female. You feel like it's a similar case? I feel like Kaon has a has a very diverse audience, but yeah, I, be I believe that. I liked Kaon. Um, yeah, so my problem with uh, Prisma Ilya is that it's fucking boring. Uh, Kyochu Roto. Uh, after an airline crash during a school trip, Oribo, Matsume, and her classmates were stranded in a seemingly deserted island. Whew, never heard this plot before. Ugh, oh, how original. Uh, Matsume found the other survivors and used her wilderness knowledge to help them. She exp uh, expects that they will be rescued in about three days, which doesn't seem so long to endure. However, she didn't account for the fact that the island is populated with giant killer insects. Her knowledge of butterflies, wasps, and more may be the only thing that will help her classmates survive to be rescued. Uh, I uh, I will if uh, when I watch it I will most certainly make a what I watched this week about it so stay tuned for that uh, I'll watch this this as unoriginal as this sounds it sounds a lot like one of my favorite manga Cage of Eden uh, which is somewhere around here Cage of Eden yeah it reminds me a lot of Cage of Eden um now, granted, I'm not saying that it's going to be as good as Cage of Eden. In fact, I'm saying it probably won't be. But I will try. Bean Bandit. This looks fucking 80s, 90s as fuck. Alternative Gunsmith Cats. Yeah, there we go. 80s, 90s as fuck. Uh, Rally Valentine knows her weapons well, while her partner, Minnie Mae Hopkins, loves to play with explosives. A pair run a shop illegally, and one day, Bill Collins the, of the ATF blackmails Riley and Minnie Mae into working for the ATF. Little do they know that they're getting involved in a mission larger than they could imagine. Yeah, okay, I will agree that Cage of Eden's ending is terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I, I, I would agree to that. I bet, I bet the, well, I mean, just looking at the picture right here, you can see the one of the first things I pointed out is that their face positioning is all fucked up. But, like, you look at their fucking feet and you're like, damn, those are some sexy-ass feet, you know what I'm saying? So it's already, just from this one promotional image, can pretty much confirm exactly what you just wrote there. 
Uh, honestly, I've never heard of Gunsmith Cats, but I'm gonna watch Gunsmith Cats. Uh, so there we go. So at the very least, I'm gonna watch Gunsmith Cats. I think there is a... What, what I always find hilarious is that I find, like, 80... Like, from, like, 93 to, like, 87, every anime has almost the exact same plot, and it is hilarious to me. Um... Uh, so Bean Bandit's like an alternate setting. I don't know if I'm going to watch it. It's in a single OVA. Might be worth it. Mm, we'll find out. We'll find out how good Gunsmith Cats is, and I'll see if Bean Bandit's worth it. Um, all right, what's going on here? Seisha Buta Yaro. Wa Yomiru Shoujo no y have I seen Mad Bull? I want to see Mad Bull. It's been on my list for a while. I just haven't. What is Seishu Buta Yaro? I have watched this. I have fucking watched... Oh, it's this is Bunny Girl Senpai. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll watch the Bunny Girl movie. Yeah. Oh, I watched Angel Cop recently, I think. Didn't I? Angel Cop, right? Angel Cop. Yeah, Angel Cop. Yeah, I watched Angel Cop. <laughs> Angel Cop... Look, if you wanted me to say... <laughs> Angel Cop is exactly what that era of anime was. It is the most, it is incredible. It's, it's like, like, uh, 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 what else, what else has the exact same flavor as that? Like, uh, Love City and Appleseed. Like, it's all the same fucking thing. It's all the same goddamn plot. <laughs> um, Cancer Roll 2. I, uh, official website announced they're producing a sequel to Cancer Roll which is a terrible name. He's now working in Scenario and Storyboard, so it's being worked on, is what we know about this. So what the fuck is Cancer Roll? That's a cool-looking little whatever they're standing on. Uh, what the shit am I looking at? What the shit am I looking at? All right, well, I think it's time to read the plot synopsis of whatever the hell this thing is. When a gigantic or unearthly monster looms in the skyline of a Japanese city, which Japanese city? I don't know. A Japanese city. The unexpected occurs. The Japanese self-defense force roll out the tanks while the public panics. Nobody knows what it is or where it came from, but Yuki, a bold, inquisitive teenage girl, has a secret, but it might be a useful clue. Her friend Tetsu has been clandestinely caring for a bizarre creature called a Kenso, who will prove itself to have some remarkable, even impossible characteristics. Another teenage boy, a stranger with some mysterious links to monstrosity attacking the city, shows up, and his unwelcome interest in Tetsu's pets snuff out any doubts the connection and the lights the fuse for the coming battle i sounds like a movie that happened nope 26 episodes it's listed as movie sounds like it happened then cabanera they're still making cabanera apparently they're still making cabanera uh anyway cabanera movie what's going on People say they miss 90s when anime was ultra-violent and appealed to men, not teenagers. Never mind Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, and Renma. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna put it out there. I do say all anime. I Let's be clear. I don't actually mean all anime. Uh, but there was a very... There was a lot of anime from that time that all had a similar plot. But then you could say... Here's what I'm gonna say. Anime works in stages, and then, like, like in, uh, like, like, phases, where everything has the same plot briefly. You're like, remember the isekai boom? It's just like that, but, uh, and there was a time period where everyone was a cop in a dystopian cyberpunk city. Can we just address the fact that this dude is just blatantly the guy from fucking uh uh Grin Logan. Just blatantly. Um and I don't remember his name. I don't remember his name, but I guarantee you by the end of the fucking anime, he's going to get the goddamn glasses. Uh, uh, though it's driving me crazy, I don't remember his name.
Kamina. Kamina. Yeah, he's just blatantly Kamina. Look at him. Look how blatantly Kamina this guy is. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hibiki Euphonium, uh, movie three, so they're making another Hibuki Euphonium, I never watched any of Hibuki Euphonium, uh, this is about, like, a, a music club, I believe, right, after swearing off music due to an accident, incident in the middle school, regional concert band competition, Euphonist Kamiko Omoe enters the high school hoping for a fresh start, as fate would have it, she ends up being surrounded by people with an interest in the high school brass band, Kumiko finds the motivation she needs to make music once with the help of her bandmates, some of whom are like novice tubist, uh, I, uh, I lost my place, uh, Hazuki Kato, a veteran contrabassist, Sapphire, her name is Sapphire, Kawashima, and band vice president, fellow UFOist, Asuka Tanaka, others are old friends like Kumiko's childhood friend and hornist, uh, turned trombonist, Shuichi Sukamoto, and trumpeter and bandmate from middle school, Reina Kosaka. Um, I've seen Angel's Egg. Uh, however, in the band itself, Chaos reigns supreme, despite their intention to qualify for the national band competition as they currently are. Just competing in the local festival will be a challenge, unless the new band advisor, Noboru Taki, does something about it. From the studio, then animated Suzumi Harui. <laughs> Fucking Harui, whatever. Uh, Alright, yeah, 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 yeah. Was it entirely necessary to say from the studio that animated Haruhi? Like, it's Kyo Annie. It, who the fuck? You, look, you either don't care about animation studios or you know Kyo Annie. There's no middle ground. There's no, I care about animation studios, but I don't know Kyo Annie. Uh, Kimi to Nami ni Noritara. The story centers on the relationship between Hinako, who has moved to a coastal city upon entering university, and Minato, a young firefighter with a strong sense of justice. Hinako loves surfing, and while fearless on the sea, she's still uncertain about her future. Following a fire mishap in town, Hinako and Minato encounter each other. As they spend more time surfing together, Hinako feels drawn to Minato, who dedicates himself to others. The... This motherfucker is gonna die at the end. Guaranteed. Like... Like, I'm 80% sure he dies at the end in a fucking fire, and we get to see her sad and shit, and everyone's like, oh, it's all sad, oh. Comedy my ass. You can't, you can't trick me. Science Saru? Oh, they did Crybaby Ping Pong. Okay. <laughs> Oh, no, no, see, I watched Haruhi first and then never watched the Nagato spinoff ever. Um, fucking, yeah, why not? I'll watch it. Who cares? What else am I doing? This is an adaption of a manga that was published in February 22nd, 2019. Damn, they're really pushing it. If it came out this year, like a month ago. Girls and Panzer, second film. Uh, I've never watched any of Girls and Panzer, but I believe the plot is about a world where tank fighting is a sport and they have girls tank fighting. That's it. That's your plot of Girls and Panzer. Go watch it if you care. Uh, Hubu, Twilight, whatever. Uh, Hakubu follows youths living in the now and present in Uika, Fukushima Prefecture after the Toko earthquake and tsunami on March 11, 2011. This sounds like a strictly Japanese thing. Um, Uta no Prince Sama Meiji Love Kingdom movie. Uh,. This is about what... Oh, yeah, I always love it when there's a fucking laughing red man in my face. The anime story will start somewhere in the third season left off. The competition for who opened the trip in the last international sporting event. What the fuck is this? Raging inner... What the fuck is this about? What is this about? <laughs> what is this about? Oh, is this Idol Boy? Is this an Idol Boy show? Cute boys doing idol things. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Haru that's really hard considering how influential it is. Haruka Nanami, an inspiring composer from the countryside, longs to write music for her beloved idol, Hyoto Ichiso, determined to accomplish this girl. She enro enrolls in Satomi Academy, a highly regarded vocational school for performing arts. Upon her arrival, her Haruka soon learns that everyone on staff, including the headmaster, is either an idol, composer, or a poet. To top it all off, she's surrounded by incredibly talented future idols and composers, and the competition among students is fierce, with the possibility of recruitment by the Shining Agency upon graduation, and stakes are incredibly high. She strives to reach her dream in the Academy, one Faithful night, a series of events lead Haruka to a mysterious man standing in the moonlight, and he seems a bit familiar. Uh, yeah, this is not made for me. Uh, and that's what I will say about that. Detective Conan movie 23 The Fist of the Blue Sapphire. I have never watched. Who broke back loves that anime. I've never watched Detective Conan. And I'm not gonna start now. Goodbye. <laughs> uh Soak you no Fafnir Dead Aggressor the Beyond. What a in your face title. I feel like the title is slapping me with its dick. The anime was very influential. Yes. Um, it was a major contributing factor to the... Um, uh, uh, a light, light novel adaption boom that happened. Where everyone started adapting light novels, which still hasn't ended, honestly. Uh, Yumi, Akume, and Ryo Masoka are children who have been selected to take part in a top-secret mission to be pilots of the first Fafnir combat units. I feel like we do this every single time. We fucking do this. I feel like I have to read the plot to fucking Fafnir. Uh, the last chance to survival for the human race, because of course, the enemy is ruthless, remorseless, and able to read the minds of humans. Therefore, the details of the mission are kept secret, even from the personnel involved. Young pilots must use all their courage and faith in order to survive and complete their mission, or the mankind would be comforted. Uh, eh, why not? Well, at least, how long? Is, like, it's 51 minutes for the first episode, and there's only one episode. Might as well give it a shot. See where it goes. If it's fucking terrible... It's fucking terrible, and I never have to go back. Only one episode. Not like I need to commit to a 25-episode series, because I, 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 I don't drop anime. So, you know, great. Great. I won't get fucked over. Yeah, I mean, you could say that about any novel, though. Like, the thing about light novels is they're just novels with pictures, you know? Some of them are, like, trend-chasing garbage, and then... Some of them are, you know, good. So. And some of them are a weird mixture of trend tasting garbage and good. Frame Arms Girl movie. Kiyakakia Ufu Fu Fu No Wonder No Wonderland. <laughs> Was it Miru Tights? It might have been Miru Tights. You might have heard about Miru Tights. Oh, it's an original. Well, maybe it wasn't about mirror tights. <laughs> uh, this is a compilation movie. What? I don't know what this is. What's Frame Arms Girl? Uh, the story begins with O opens a package that arrives at her doorstep. Inside the package is Groy, a Frames Arm Girl, a small robot capable of independent movement. Groy is a newly developed prototype, a Frames Arm Girl equipped with artificial self and an advanced AI that gives her personality. I was the only one that has activated her. Groy begins to gather both battle data and emotions starting day-to-day -day life with O, who knows nothing about the Frames Arms Girl. So, cute girls do cute things, and one of the cute girls is a tiny robot. That's poorly animated. Fascinating. I'm out. <laughs> Lupin the Third. Mine Fujiko Nuose. A, 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 like the fourth Lupin the Third movie in this universe. Um...
This one set around Fujiko Mine, who is, let me just tell you, Fujiko Mine is an amazing character, and I have actually considered making a full video, uh, like, dissecting her. Like, not, like, physically, but, like, uh, I forget what they call it. Uh, character study. I've, I've wanted to make a character study about Fujiko Mine. Um, she's fucking wonderful, and if you're asking me if I'm gonna watch a full fucking movie about Fujiko Mine, absolutely I'll watch a fucking Fujiko Mine movie. She's great. She's fucking awesome. Alright, Kaiji no Kodoma. Uh, Children of the Sea. I feel like I have heard of this. Oh, I might be thinking of Children of the Whales, actually. Yeah, I'm probably thinking of Children of the Whales. Okay. I have no idea what this is, then. Never mind. One vacation, Ruka meets two boys, Ume and Sora. Creative names, let me tell you. Whose upbringing contains strange and wonderful secrets drawn to the beautiful swimming, almost like flying. Ruka and the adults who know them are entwined in a complex mesh. Meanwhile, an unexplained anomaly is occurring all over the world. Fish are disappearing. This begins a marine venture of boys and girls to do all the captain senses. I don't care. I don't care about fish. Fish are, pro are cool and all, but I don't give a fuck. Laid backers. In order to take over her grandmother's Dagashi store, art student Kumi <sighs> Hona Mauna Mua Ma Ma ha, Hona Manuma moved to Kyoto. She met Harumi Mino and Kei Kusanagi. Mai Hirasaka, and a dog who lives in the store, which is supposed to be empty. Kumi ends up living with these girls who claim that their heroes reincarnated to the contemporary period to chase after the Demon King. Army and others see, seem to live a peaceful life with no missions to do anymore. Ran, who was the Demon King in the past, appears to be an elementary school girl from failing to reincarnate one day. The story begins Ran requesting to collect Demon King's fragments. That's an interesting story they have going there. You know what? Here's the thing, though. It's called Laid Backers, which makes me think that it's probably, like... Probably, like, an Iyashi K kind of series. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's probably not as cool as I want it to be. Yeah, yeah, they mostly do, like, chill shit. I don't know. Eh... Uh, yeah, uh, 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 one episode, one episode, yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna add that one, we'll see where it goes, how about that? Alright, we're nearing the end, which is great for me, because my voice is getting sore. These fucking videos, picking shows, last for like an hour, and I do more talking in this one hour than I do in an entire stream. Taga Tame no Alchemist. Uh, the game set in the continent of Babel, where the Tower Battle looms large over the Seven Nations. After the mention of alchemy led to its use as a tool of war that brought humanity to the brink of extinction, the Seven Nations struck an uneasy peace that led to a prohibition on alchemy for hundreds of years since. In the continental year 9-11... The Nation of Lustrous broke the pact by assembling an army bolstered by alchemy with the ambitions of conquest over the continent, led by Anvilia, the Six Nations allied and struck down the rogue nation, casting alchemy once again into the darkness. But 20 years after the war, alchemy once again began to cause chaos in the land. Wow, everything about that is the least interesting thing I have ever heard. Okay, cool. Pandora to Akubi. I have accidentally clicked X, I believe. F <laughs> FMA and Avatar? Uh, no, I wouldn't even say that. I would just say it sounds like... <laughs> I would just say it sounds like Full Metal Alchemist, to be honest. Honestly, it just sounds like someone heard the plot of Full Metal Alchemist and was like, yeah, fuck it, check this shit out. X-Flag and... Tatsunoko production collaboration. The character Akubi originates from 1969 Hakushan Daimo anime, where Akubi character appears as the daughter of the titular genie character Hakushan. The October marks the 50th anniversary of the franchise. Meanwhile, Pandora is a girl of wishes from Monster Strike's fart phone game. Uh, so this is a uh, crossover 
of a bunch of old series uh, while simultaneously being like a, like a throwback to like an old 90s anime or old, not 90s, uh, 60s anime, um, which tells me that this is super not intended for me. So, good on ya. Uh, happy 50th anniversary. Um, that actually looks, that actually looks shockingly good, though, is my problem. It actually looks really good, though. Hmm. What is this? You know what? I might try it. Uh, Hanasaki Kohan no Ramatan. This, I just want to know what this is. Uh, after the invasion of the Vivolian army, the, uh, the sprite Himawari and her childhood friend Tsubaki flee their homeland of Florier for the town of Ramatan, where they live their lives out in peace for a time. One day, Himawari's friend and fellow sprite uh, Asad, uh, Ajis, uh, Ajise is kidnapped by mysterious strangers now Hawaiian detective Sabaki set out to rescue her but find the dreaded Vivolians standing in their way a 2D animated special about the Monster Strike anime what, uh, that actually sounds kind of interesting that actually sounds kind of interesting what the fuck is Monster Strike oh now it looks terrible all of a sudden oh boy oh that is that is not a flattering promotional image for anyone. You never want to look that generic as your promotional image. Uh, Ren Honomura moved down to the Kinamahara, but he isn't able to remember about the time he spent there other than the big flashbacks. When he receives his cell phone, which he had sent to a shop for repairs, he finds a mysterious game titled Monster Strike has been installed on it. Oh, I was think I'm fairly awake of the, vaguely aware of what this was. Um, which has been sent to a shop for repairs. He finds a mysterious game titled Monster Strike, which has been installed, unaware of its purpose or how it got there. Ren decides to open it, an action that will change his life forever when he finds himself suddenly attacked by a strange man now trapped on the roof of a strangely designated stage. Ren is shocked to see the man summons a realistic monster from the game that is capable of inflicting damage on a human. His only chance of getting out of situation lives by summoning the dragon Oregon, who sells Ren that he will crush the opposing monster for him. Unfortunately, it turns out Oregon is a tiny dragon that is completely useless. This is about uh, Pokemon in a video game, is what I'm hearing. Sounds like that existed. Sounds like it existed. Shin Chan Movie 27, Shinkan Ryokan Hurricane, Hurricane, Ushinawarata Hiroshi. Um, Alright, well, Shin Chan is fucking great, and I love Shin Chan. It's also long as fuck. And this is the 27th movie. So we will put that on a back burner and a half. Uh, King of Prism, Shiny Seven Stars 3, Leo, Yu, and Alexander. Which I don't know what that is. And I don't know what that is. And this is the first movie, the King of Prism, Shiny Stars movie. This is about male idols. So I'm out. All right. Then another movie... And then whatever the fuck this is. We're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, Taisho Waharuko. Why is every fucking anime we've clicked in the past ten minutes have the same old man with glasses? Or, like, vague beard face. Like, it, it's the same guy every time. It's weird. Um, this looks... What the fuck is happening there? That is weird. All right. You and a troubled young man meets Buddhist monk Shirin and listens to his teaching. Shirin takes him on as a disciple, and they travel together with uh, experiences both joyous and heartbreaking awaiting them on the road. Sounds like it exists. Okay. Good for you. <clears throat> this Pop Team Epic. Yeah, this is Pop Team Epic. I didn't watch Pop Team Epic, so I don't care. Um, Watashi ne... Tenshi ga Miorota special, which I don't know what that is, so let's see what this is. Uh, 
One Day Fifth Grader, Hinata. Well, this is a winter 2019 anime. Oh, that I plan to watch. You know what? I could see him playing acoustic guitar on a street corner. Uh, all right. Apparently, I wanted to watch this, but let's see what this is about, just to know know what I've already signed up for. Uh, Hinata Hishona brings her friend uh, friend Hana Shirosuke to her house, and Hinata's sister Miyako, a college student, falls in love with Hina at first sight. Oh, I remember this. Miyoko managed to get along with Hana somehow, but her clumsy behavior and shyness make Hana weary. Even so, Hana gradually opens up to Miyoko, who wants to come closer to her. I remember this. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. All right. I, yeah. I, I believe I said something similar to everything about that is horrifyingly uncomfortable and sounds like a train wreck. You gave Pop Team Epic a 2 out of 10. Hey, it's Virtual Sun the Special, which I really, I'm not, we're not going to watch. I just want to know how what people thought of Virtual Sun. They gave it a 4.5 out of 8, or 4.58, which is really bad. And I would just like to quickly compare the 4.58 to Pupa, just to see where it falls on the Pupa scale. All right, no, so people don't don't dislike it as much as Pupa, so that's good. Now we know. <sighs> Looks like it was old before the first episode ends. Yet you watched the whole thing; it was torture. <laughs> I imagine <gasps> this is it, the last one. Genji Fantasy Neko Hi Ga Hikaru Genji Ni Koe Shite Shita. The Tale of Genji Museum in Uji City, Kyokyo, will be in a short uh, film blending history and fantasy. The story follows a modern high school girl named Hana transformed into a cat transformed back in time. She travels a thousand years back to the Heian period, portrayed in the Tale of Genji, arguably the most famous novel in Japanese literature. Guided by the novel's titular character, Hikaru Genji, uh, Hana experiences firsthand the emotions the author, Murasaki Shikobu, depicted in her novel. The short features scenes based on the diary of a lady of Murasaki and the other historical mysteries such as real-life Nobu Fujiwara no Michinaga uh, swiping early drafts of the tale of Genji because he cannot wait to read chapters as Murasaki wrote them. Um, that's an interesting idea, and it made me realize that I don't know what the fuck happens in Tale of Genji, so I just want to know if they ever made an anime about it. I'd be shocked if there's not a Tale of Genji anime. And born from a much-loved but lowly Genji Hikaru, called the Shining Prince and the beloved son of the Second Emperor, although he can't be the heir to the throne, Genji spends his life surrounded by every pleasure and love, yet one thing he longs and love the power and... That's actually an interesting plot. I can understand why it's so well... Assuming this is actually an adaption of the tale of Genji. Which, you gotta watch out, because sometimes the idea of adapting an anime is that King Arthur is now a girl, and... <laughs> And Giles DeRace is also now a girl. So. <laughs> I actually uh, kind of enjoyed Pupa. Uh, I believe I gave it a six. What? I just want to know a discussion forum on whether this is an actually decent adaption of Tale of Genji. So let's just judge these people's... <laughs> I need to get it all out. Plus, it's a Mountain Dew. Uh, this is just talking about the style. This is just talking about the style. Apparently, this is a stylish fucking anime. Drinking Pepsi. I'm almost insulted. I mean, Mountain Dew's a Pepsi product, but I don't drink Pepsi. I'm an American. We drink pe we drink Coke here. Uh, <laughs> this animation, this anime is an adaption. While there are a bit of an accuracy, fees, especially with the closing of the anime, certain things hold true. Genji's playboy for the high period is in love with a stepmother who's technically not that much older than him. Okay, so this is a decent enough adaption. Uh huh.
Okay. All right. So this is a decent enough adaption. All right. I mostly just want to watch an adaption of fucking Tale of Genji, I think is what we learned. And with that, we're done. With that, we're done. Um... <laughs> it also looks like dish soap. Uh, I don't... I, I'm going to disagree on the dish soap. My dish soap tends to be blue, though. So, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's the stream. We're done. <laughs> there's uh, there's not really anything else to do, I don't think. Uh, we we went through, we added everything. Uh, fun time. Fun time, actually. Um, good job, everyone. I don't I don't know why I'm still talking. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just close out the stream. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, these are actually surprisingly fun, but we can only do them four times a year because anime only comes out four times a year. So, uh, yeah, I've been Sacrivalic, uh, your own wife, Hope, and I will see you tomorrow with Danganronpa 2. I know I got pissed off last time. I'm probably going to get pissed off next class trial. I fucking hate class trials, and I always have, but we're going to play it tomorrow, and we won't have a class trial because people don't die that quickly, I assume. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>